As many anglers know, catch and release is an important part of ensuring the future of our fisheries. By allowing trout and other game fish to return to their waters, we can contribute to the future of their species and our sport. But in spite of good intentions, catch and release practices are often not performed properly, and many fish that are let go end up dying from trauma or exhaustion. Hey, I'm John, and we're here at the Leland Fly Fishing Ranch in Sonoma, California. And while we don't usually fish here, today we are, in order to teach you the basics about how to land, handle, and revive fly-caught trout. Remember, being prepared is your responsibility. Successful catch and release fly fishing begins before you even caught a trout. By using barbless hooks or debarbing your hooks, you can minimize bodily harm for the fish that may take your fly. Hooked fish should be landed as quickly as possible to minimize stress, so fish the heaviest leader that still allows you to fool the fish. This means starting with, for example, eight pound tests and dropping down to six pound tests only if the trout seem to be refusing your fly. When it comes to rod weight, don't undergun yourself. A five weight like this one is generally a good compromise between casting subtlety and fighting power. Keep in mind that during the summer, water temperatures may be higher, which means that less oxygen is dissolved in the water and trout are basically short of breath. They're especially vulnerable at this time. Trout are more fragile than you might think, and they need to be handled carefully, or they'll be permanently damaged or killed. The absolute best way to land and release a trout is to quickly bring it to you and then grasp the leader and remove the hook. If you quickly land a trout, resuscitation probably isn't necessary and this release is the best. While touching the fish is never good, you might need to if it's a large, exhausted fish that needs resuscitation or you want to take a photo with it. If you do touch the trout, be sure to wet your hands first so you don't rub off too much of that protective slime layer that keeps the trout free of infection. If a trout squirms in your hands, try to hold on, but don't squeeze. Sometimes trout will squirm less if held upside down. Don't hold a fish over a boat or the ground because if it slips out of your hands, it'll take a header, thus dying. For the same reason, don't beach a trout or let them dangle in the air from the end of your leader. Never stick your fingers in a fish's gills if you want the fish to live. Never hold trout by the lip as you would with bass. When you hold a trout, cradle its belly just behind its gills. For extra control, you can gently pinch a pectoral fin between two fingers. If you want trout to survive catch and release fly fishing, it's important to have the right tools. If you're targeting smaller trout, you probably don't need a net. Otherwise, offer one with a rubber mesh, since it scrapes off less of the trout slime layer than a woven net does. Most anglers carry clamps or forceps, also called hemostats. These pliers enable you to grasp the hook even if it's way down inside the trout's mouth. Then carefully back it out and remove it. If the hook is stuck way back in the trout's mouth or throat and you can't retrieve it, just cut the leader and leave the fly in place. The hook will work its way out before long. Some studies suggest that it's actually a less lethal way to practice catch and release. Depending on how quickly you land a trout, your resuscitation time can take anywhere from five seconds to a whole minute. A spot where current is moving at walking speed is a great place to revive and release a trout. Gently hold the trout nose into the current. Don't grip the trout too firmly, but keep it from being pushed downstream. You should see the trout's skill plates flare regularly, a sign that it's breathing properly. The trout should also be able to balance and right itself. If it can't, support it in the current until it has recovered. When it begins to feel better, the trout will start kicking and trying to swim away repeatedly. Be sure to let the fish swim out of your hands, don't just let it go. It should swim away confidently. On still waters, trout can't recover as quickly since there is no current to actively bring oxygen to their gills. Be sure to carry a net and try not to remove the fish from the water. On release, cradle the trout for a longer time until it forcefully swims away. Taking a photo of an awesome fish is sometimes hard to resist, but remember, that a simple underwater camera provides a portrait of the trout in their environment without doing them harm. If you plan to take a photo with a trout out of the water, keep the fish secure in the water with the hook in its mouth until your fishing buddy is ready with the camera. A good option is to trade cameras ahead of time so you don't have to dig through your pack in the heat of the moment. You know it's a good photo if the angler is kneeling in the water, the trout is above the water close to the angler's body, not held at arm's length or covered by the angler's hands. The trout should be so fresh from the drink that water is visibly pouring from its body. 
If your friend biffs the shot, immediately return the trout to the water until you're ready to shoot again. For whatever reason you can't get a good photo after a few attempts, remember that you'll catch more fish in the future as long as you successfully release the fish that you catch today. Thanks for watching, and as always, we hope to see you on the water.